G'day guys, welcome back once again to the True Football YouTube channel, True Footy YouTube channel. We are once again doing some, I want to say season preview content. It always feels like a season preview because we've gone months since the last game of footy, but of course it's actually round two. I've obviously done my predictions for round two. I've had a crack at predicting ladder after five rounds, and today in this video I figured I'm going to have a crack at predicting the ladder by the end of the season. Now, I have already done a prediction video for the 2020 season which you can go back and watch where I've got a bit of analysis on each team so if you're wondering why I am doing the same thing again well to be honest the answer for that is I feel like circumstances have well and truly shifted I think when I made the original ladder prediction video there was not even any talk of no crowds at football games let alone a delayed a gap between round one and round two. So, fair to say things have changed. Not drastically, I'm not gonna repeat myself and go through every team and my reasoning like I did at the time. I'm just gonna give you more of a summary of what I'm thinking. Obviously, there are some very unique circumstances with season 2020. Obviously, there's been a big delay, so different teams will probably benefit in different ways. I feel like a couple of teams in particular, like Essendon and Fremantle off the top of my head, who had horrific injury lists at the time, are going to be much better off for it. Someone like Sydney, who's had just Buddy Franklin go down, WA and South Australian clubs hubbing in Queensland for at least the first month of the season, and potentially longer, I feel like, WA is more likely to stay stubborn on their borders. So what is that? What effect does that have on the Eagles and Dockers and where I rate them? It is very, very hard to forecast, but I'm going to have a crack at that in this video. So like I always do, I'm going to start from the bottom to the top. I won't necessarily go team by team, but I've actually broken the league, the ladder, into sections of clubs that I group together because I feel like they're on a similar level. I'm going to start at the bottom of the ladder. My bottom four teams are 18th Gold Coast. In second last spot, I've got the Adelaide Crows and the Sydney Swans and Carlton make up the rest of my bottom four. I feel like the Gold Coast Suns is fairly self-explanatory. They're a really young side, not a lot of proven depth. I don't need, really need to justify that one too long and hard. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna have a very tough season. In second last spot was Adelaide. This again is a tricky one because I don't think Adelaide are that bad, but I think they're gonna be a rebuilding side like I've banged on about. I don't think their mature age talent is quite good enough. Further to that, they're probably going to lose a whole chunk of home games and have to obviously relocate to Queensland along with the other clubs and uh, who knows what effect that's going to have on the players mentally. The Sydney Swans are a very green side who are top heavy with some stars and one of them has just gone down. Buddy Franklin's out for God knows how long, potentially nine weeks. Like a third of the season at least without Buddy Franklin, I could see them dropping into, well they're already in the bottom four so dropping into the bottom three. And then rounding out the bottom four, I've got Carlton who I've talked about, I feel like have a lot of the good youth that they want on their list, but it's still they still need time to develop them and I don't see this being a big year for them jumping up the ladder. Next up, I've got a group of five teams that I find very hard to separate. You got Port Adelaide, Melbourne, St Kilda, Fremantle, and North Melbourne. North Melbourne for me is probably the weakest this this bunch. I mean, they're a tough and gritty side, like I've said in my last video, and they're super competitive, but another side with a bit of youth and a heavy reliance on older players, they need to start making that transition. Maybe I'm a little bit harsh, but that's just the way I see it. Fremantle is a tricky one. I've long felt like they've been a team that's probably better than they've actually played on field. And like I said, with the injuries they've got, and the players they got coming back, suddenly, potentially, Alex Pierce is not so far off. He was one of their better players. Jesse Hogan helps their structure. He's potentially available. Joel Hamling's back. David Mundy might not even miss too much football either. And these were all players that were pretty much out of action at the start of the year. I think Fremantle's going to benefit from that, even though they're probably going to lose some home game to Gold Coast. Uh, St. Kilda are a side that I just can't get excited about. In my round five prediction, we saw that I have them going one and four from the first five rounds. And frankly, I think they're moving in the right direction. But again, I just don't see it happening for them this year. And Melbourne, they're a really unpredictable side at the best of times. Who knows how they're going to respond after a horror year last year. I'm going to hedge my bets and put them somewhere in the lower middle half of the ladder. And Port Adelaide is a team that could go either way for me. They've got good experienced players. They've got great youth. Maybe not so much quite in that middle age bracket, which is why I feel like they're almost at an awkward point. But they've still got a lot of talent they're going to give games to. Further than that, they potentially don't play that much footy at Adelaide Oval this year. That's why I don't have them as a genuine finals contender for me. They're probably more of a smoky. 
Next up, in the next group, I've got another fat wad of teams that I find pretty difficult to, uh, to separate. You've got Hawthorne, West Coast, Essendon, Brisbane, Geelong, and the Bulldogs. So I'll start at the bottom. The Bulldogs are a side that I was hot on in the preseason, and maybe I'm too reactionary, but I've lost confidence in where they're at at the moment. Obviously, round one was a horrible, horrible showing against a premiership contender or a perceived contender. This was the year the Bulldogs, for me, were supposed to really rise up and be another top six team, but that round one showing was pathetic. Had some players like Norton underdone, so maybe they benefit there. But for me, I kind of lost confidence in them. I think they could miss the eight. Geelong are a side that uh, I really rate, and I don't necessarily think they're going to drop down just because they've got older players. But Tim Kelly out does hurt, and we'll see where we go with that. I'm not really sure what to expect from them. Again, a lot of their older players, or a lot of their players that they rely on are getting older. Will that mean they drop down the ladder? Maybe a little bit, but not more substantially than, say, where I'm going to have them, which is just on the edge of the finals. The Brisbane Lions are a great team. Went on form. They went out in straight, straight sets last year, so they've obviously got something to prove this year, but that could go either way, perhaps a dent in confidence. And I think they've been very, I wouldn't say lucky because it could be down to good management as well, but they haven't really had their depth tested by injuries, which is why I'm just hesitant about putting them any higher than about 6th or 7th on the ladder. Essendon are a side, I think, benefit massively from the break. They've had a, well, they're having a lot of off-season uh, operations, like I've talked about before. And uh, like Melbourne, they had players struggling to be fit or missing a bunch of their best 20 or so players in the preseason, but had some really encouraging form. Round one was a little bit unconvincing, no doubt, against Frio, but perhaps after the break, they'll be refreshed. I think they're good enough to finish in the top six. Next up, we have my West Coast Eagles, and this is a little bit of a negative prediction, but mind you, that's exactly where they finished last year, so maybe it's not too gloomy. I just think the Eagles are going to lose out too much by going to play at Metricon. I do think there's a chance we'll still build a bit of a home ground advantage if we start playing at Metricon every week, sort of like how we won the flag our first year at Optus Stadium. But at the same time, the disruption it's going to have on these players being away there from their families, maybe for a month is fine, but I don't know how likely it is that we're going to be back in WA following round five. Doesn't seem super realistic to me, and that's why I don't have them in the top four. In fourth spot is a Smokey. I don't necessarily rate them as the fourth best list, but Hawthorne, just for me, are a little bit dangerous, and uh, I got a just a weird feeling they're going to be very competitive this year. I do have them clearly behind Collingwood, GWS, and Richmond, who are the other three I'm going to get to at the moment. They're not a genuine contender for me, and to be honest, I still like West Coast list and best 22 in depth more. But uh, at the moment, I could just see them leapfrogging the Eagles just on the basis that the Eagles have a little bit much to deal with this year. And that leads me to my three major contenders this year. And they're pretty conservative bets. You've got Collingwood, GWS, and Richmond. Richmond are the reigning premiers. Now, these aren't power rankings as such. I don't think Richmond's the third best team. I actually still think it's fair to say they are the best team of the competition. It has to be said with the way they finished last season and annihilated GWS in the grand final. But uh, they're not. That I can see them just pulling a Hawthorne and just being around the mark in time for finals and not necessarily finishing on top of the ladder. In fact, the two flags that they've won, they've won it from third. So I could see them doing something similar this year. GWS are one of the strongest lists in the competition. Their best 22 is very, very strong, and their depth is sound. It's going to only be the mental side of the game which holds them back, but in, and obviously the ability to play the MCG is pretty important too. But I have them right up there with Collingwood and Richmond as the main big dogs this year. And finally, Collingwood are the team that I'm probably most wary of. Just by, I, It's a little bit reactionary based on round one and how devastating they look, but their list depth is really strong. Obviously, in recent times, they've lacked a big key presence, but I do think with Dugowie, Majacek, and Stevenson straight off the top of my head, I think that's a fairly good front three for a side that lacks avenues to goals. And Mason Cox adds a bit of a sort of foil for those guys as well. It's not the best forward line in the game, but their midfield and defense is strong. I think there's a good chance Collingwood are going to win the premiership this year. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to touch base with you and rehash my predictions with a little COVID-19 twist. This is probably how I see it going at the moment. This is also probably the single hardest season it has been to predict, uh, just given all the circumstances. No crowds. Are there going to be true home games with no you know, home cheers? Who knows what to expect? But I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought of my predictions in the comments. I always welcome some debate. 
It's good to be back and I hope you're all doing well. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video.